The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Section 19. The Ghosts. Never stoops the soaring vulture on his quarry in the desert, on the sick or wounded bison, but another vulture, watching from his high aerial lookout, sees the downward plunge and follows, and a third pursues the second, coming from the invisible ether. First a speck, and then a vulture, till the air is dark with pinions. So disasters come not singly, but as if they watched and waited, scanning one another's motions. When the first descends, the others follow, follow gathering flockwise, round their victim sick and wounded, first a shadow, then a sorrow, till the air is dark with anguish. Now, o'er all the dreary northland, mighty Peboan the winter, breathing on the lakes and rivers, into stone had changed their waters. From his hair he shook the snowflakes, till the plains were strewn with whiteness, one uninterrupted level, as if, stooping, the Creator with his hand had smoothed them over. Through the forest, wide and wailing, roamed the hunter on his snowshoes, in the village worked the women, pounded maize or dressed the deerskin, and the young men played together on the ice the noisy ball-play, on the plain the dance of snowshoes. One dark evening after sundown, in her wigwam, laughing water, sat with old Nokomis, waiting for the steps of Hiawatha, homeward from the hunt returning. On their faces gleamed the firelight, painting them with streaks of crimson, in the eyes of old Nokomis glimmered like the watery moonlight, in the eyes of laughing water glistened like the sun in water, and behind them crouched their shadows in the corners of the wigwam, and the smoke in wreaths above them climbed and crowded through the smoke flue. Then the curtain of the doorway from without was slowly lifted. Brighter glowed the fire a moment, and a moment swerved the smoke wreath, as two women entered softly passed the doorway uninvited, without word of salutation, without sign of recognition, sat down in the farthest corner, crouching low among the shadows. From their aspect and their garments strangers seemed they in the village, very pale and haggard were they, as they sat there sad and silent, trembling, cowering with the shadows. Was it the wind above the smoke flue, muttering down into the wigwam, was it the owl, the Coco Coho, hooting from the dismal forest? Sure, a voice said in the silence, These are corpses clad in garments. These are ghosts that come to haunt you from the kingdom of Pomena, from the land of the hereafter. Homeward now came Hiawatha from his hunting in the forest, with the snow upon his tresses and the red deer on his shoulders. At the feet of laughing water, down he threw his lifeless burden. Nobler, handsomer, she thought him, than when first he came to woo her, first threw down the deer before her, as a token of his wishes, as a promise of the future. Then he turned and saw the strangers, cowering, crouching with the shadows, said within himself, Who are they? What strange guests has Minnehaha? But he questioned not the strangers only spake to bid them welcome to his lodge, his food, his fireside. When the evening meal was ready, and the deer had been divided, both the pallid guests, the strangers, springing from among the shadows, seized upon the choicest portions, seized the white fat of the roebuck, set apart for laughing water, for the wife of Hiawatha, without asking, without thanking, eagerly devoured the morsels, flitted back among the shadows in the corner of the wigwam. Not a word spake Hiawatha, not a motion made Nokomis, not a gesture laughing water, not a change came o'er their features, only Minnehaha softly whispered, saying, They are famished, let them do what best delights them, let them eat, for they are famished. Many a daylight dawned and darkened, Many a night shook off the daylight as the pine shakes off the snowflakes from the midnight of its branches. Day by day the guests, unmoving, sat there silent in the wigwam. But by night, in storm or starlight, 
forth they went into the forest bringing firewood to the wigwam bringing pine cones for the burning always sad and always silent and whenever hiawatha came from fishing or from hunting when the evening meal was ready and the food had been divided sliding from their darksome corner came the pallid guests the strangers seized upon the choicest portions set aside for laughing water and without rebuke or question flitted back among the shadows never once had hiawatha by a word or look reproved them never once had old nokomis made a gesture of impatience never once had laughing water shown resentment at the outrage all had they endured in silence that the rights of guest and stranger that the virtue of free giving by a look might not be lessened by a word might not be broken once at midnight hiawatha ever wakeful ever watchful in the wigwam dimly lighted by the brands that still were burning by the glimmering flickering firelight heard a sighing oft repeated from his couch rose hiawatha from his shaggy hides of bison pushed aside the deerskin curtain saw the pallid guests the shadows sitting upright on their couches weeping in the silent midnight and he said o oh, guests why is it that your hearts are so afflicted that you sob so in the midnight has perchance the old nokomis has my wife my menehaha wronged or grieved you by unkindness failed in hospitable duties then the shadows ceased from weeping ceased from sobbing and lamenting and they said with gentle voices we are ghosts of the departed souls of those who once were with you from the realms of chibiabos hither have we come to try you hither have we come to warn you cries of grief and lamentation reach us in the blessed islands cries of anguish from the living calling back their friends departed sadden us with useless sorrow therefore have we come to try you no one knows us no one heeds us we are but a burden to you and we see that the departed have no place among the living think of this o hiawatha speak of it to all the people that henceforward and for ever they no more with lamentations sadden the souls of the departed in the islands of the blessed do not lay such heavy burdens in the graves of those you bury not such weight of fur and wampum not such weight of pots and kettles for the spirits faint beneath them only give them food to carry only give them fire to light them four days is the spirit's journey to the land of ghosts and shadows four its lonely night encampments four times must their fires be lighted therefore when the dead are buried let a fire as night approaches four times on the grave be kindled that the soul upon its journey may not lack the cheerful firelight may not grope about in darkness farewell noble hiawatha we have put you to the trial to the proof have put your patience by the insult of our presence by the outrage of our actions we have found you great and noble fail not in the greater trial faint not in the harder struggle when they ceased a sudden darkness fell and filled the silent wigwam hiawatha heard a rustle as of garments trailing by him heard the curtain of the doorway lifted by a hand he saw not felt the cold breath of the night air for a moment saw the starlight but he saw the ghosts no longer saw no more the wandering spirits from the kingdom of ponema from the land of the hereafter end of section nineteen